Hello, and welcome to our Yoga Hero Teachers podcast. This podcast has been created to help yoga teachers teach with passion, avoid burnout, and earn a fair living. And today, we're looking at introducing yoga philosophy into your asana classes. Teaching yoga with passion means taking the parts of this life-changing, vast practice that light you up and sharing them with people who want or need them. I believe you shouldn't try to teach everyone everything. I think that leads to burnout. But if you're called to share the philosophy of yoga, to share yoga beyond the asana, then great. But introducing philosophy into your asana classes can be overwhelming. (laughs) How do you do it? When? Should you say the Sanskrit? What if you're not confident pronouncing the Sanskrit? What if you can never remember the Sanskrit? (laughs) What if you get emotional speaking about a concept that's changed your life? There are so many things that can potentially hold us back. And so I just want to take some that are common, break them down. And in doing that, if you feel more confident to bring even a touch of philosophy into your asana classes, well, that's just absolutely brilliant. In this episode, we'll look at the benefits to you as a teacher to bringing philosophy into your classes. We'll look at the benefits to your yogis. And then some philosophical concepts and themes that are potentially easier, more accessible to integrate into your classes to help you get into the swing of it. In a future episode, we'll look at practical tips to bringing philosophy into your classes. So stay tuned for that one. All right, let's crack on. So the benefits to you as a yoga teacher. In pretty much everything that I do, I start with the benefits. If you don't know what you're going to get out of something, you are definitely not going to do it. So the benefits to you as a yoga teacher, well, first of all, I think undeniably introducing philosophy into your asana classes takes your classes up a level. As more and more and more new yoga teachers get their certificates every day, we all need to keep working on ways to keep our teachings progressing. When you first qualify, you're a flow teacher or an ashtanga teacher or a hatha teacher, which is brilliant. And then maybe, hopefully, you start to learn more about anatomy, more about philosophy, more about sequencing, about the nervous system. And the classes that you teach reflect that deepening learning, which then further defines who you are as a yoga teacher, helping the yogis who want and need what you teach find you. The second benefit is that it keeps you honest. As yoga teachers, we know that the work is done when we're liberated. (laughs) And until then, there's quite a lot to do. Introducing philosophy into your classes keeps you humble, honest, and keeps you aware of the work that there is to do over the course of the rest of this lifetime and in future lifetimes too, if that's what you do. (laughs) Our third benefit is that it helps you in your own life. Do you ever have that feeling where you realise that something that just happened would have absolutely enraged the old you, but the new yogi you uh, just wasn't actually bothered, maybe didn't even notice, was completely unaffected? Well, this can keep happening. Your life, your mental state can keep improving with more learning. And if you're committing to introducing philosophy into your classes, you'll have to keep learning because then you've got more to bring in. All right, so moving on to the benefits to your yogis. There's an argument that if you're only teaching asana, are you really teaching yoga? Well, I do not want to get into that now. 
I firmly believe that we need to meet people where they are, which includes what they're ready to be exposed to. But it's clear as a crystal that yoga is more than just asana. The first benefit to your yogis is that it could change their life. I'm sure, in part, you became a yoga teacher because you wanted to help people. You found so much incredible benefit from the practice that you felt a calling to share it. If you introduce a philosophical concept into a class, it might just land on someone who needs that exact thing at that exact moment, and it could change their life. The second benefit for your yogis is that it could just help them find a touch more peace (laughs) so maybe not the overwhelming wow you've changed my life that you may have been thinking about but if you can help your yogis make peace with a friendship ending or a job changing or their body changing that really is amazing and it really is enough and our third benefit is that it could help them with their asana practice How often do you see people straining in your classes? You know that they have challenging, stressful jobs. They rush to yoga, they're late or nearly late. And then when they are on the mat, they're just trying so hard to do the best pose that they can possibly do. (laughs) What if you can help them find stability, easefulness, comfort, permission to ease off a little bit? This might even hopefully spill out into their life off the yoga mat. All right, so let's move on to things to bear in mind when introducing philosophy into your asana classes. First of all, what you're introducing, it doesn't have to be life-changing. You can just ignite the spark. While it's really lovely to keep Sanskrit alive, actually, the most useful thing that you can probably do is to give your yogis a guide as to how to practically apply the concept in their life. So, for example, if you bring in the concept of Santosha, contentment, cheerfulness, gratitude, however you want to think about it, you could ask your yogis to bring to mind something that's troubling them in their life right now and search in that to find something that they're grateful for within that situation. So you've introduced them to Santosha. You may or may not use the Sanskrit. That would be really personal to you. You can translate it. Use maybe a couple of different transliterations to help give your yogis concepts and then guide them of how to put it into their life right now, straight away, so they've got that insight that they can use that evening, the next day, the rest of the week. Another thing to bear in mind is you, (laughs) okay? You can use your own life as inspiration, but it's not about you or it doesn't have to be about you. There's a real authenticity in sharing what's affected you and when you do, it's really clear to your yogis that you're sharing learnings from your heart. You don't have to describe the entire situation, which might sound all you, 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 or it might get you emotional, or it might take you off track a little bit. You don't have to use names or dates. You could just say something once happened with a friend and I was really hurt, but then I remembered this concept that I'm just about to teach you and it really helped me cope. So I'd love to teach you a bit more about that today and then maybe it'll help you one day too. And then go into the concept. And remember, this is our last bit to bear in mind, that repetition is the mother of learning. You don't have to come up with a new concept, a new theme, a new word, a new scripture each week, each class. It could maybe even be more powerful to revisit the same idea for a few weeks in a row, maybe coming at it from a different angle or asking people to introspect as to how they feel about this concept after the week that they've just had. How does it land on them today? 
Lastly today, here's a couple of philosophical concepts that you can weave into your classes and a bit of inspiration as to how you can do that. So to be super duper mega mega clear here, I am not intending to be prescriptive here at all. I actually can't imagine that there's a wrong way to bring philosophy into your classes. So if you have an idea and it's not covered here, that's not in any way because it's wrong. I just want to take a lot of the worry and guesswork out of it to make it as doable as possible. So here's just a couple of ideas to get your cogs turning. The yamas and niyamas, of course. <laughs> as well as being an absolute gift for guidance as to how to live a life for more peace, the yamas and niyamas are absolute gifts for asana classes, such as, for example, ahimsa. You could introduce ahimsa non-harm at the beginning of your class while your yogis are in, like shavasana or balasana or tadasana easy meditation, you could ask them to think about where they're particularly hard on themselves in their life, at work or in terms of fitness, in relationships. Stress that there is no need to judge or even to change anything, but just to be aware. And then ask your yogis to keep that awareness as they start to move. Ask them to notice if they start to push themselves to extremes. Ask them, for this one class today, can you pull back from the edge way, way back and practice well within your comfort zone? How does that feel? Of course, practicing like this all the time wouldn't maybe precipitate any self-improvement. It's all about balance. But if someone's really hard on themselves all the time, Practicing a full asana class with ahimsa at front and center of every breath, of every pose, of every transition would create that balance. We talked before about santosha, about contentment, cheerfulness, gratitude. Could you remind your yogis at key stages and quite often through the class? to look for contentment within each pose, somewhere in their body where they feel gratitude. Or maybe they can just even practice gratitude that they are practicing physical yoga that day, that they are well enough to do so. And finally, just in our quick inspiration guide today, how about Svadhyaya self-study? This could be great for a slower class where there really is lots of time to think. Svadhyaya is shining a light on us, on our thoughts, our words and our physical deeds, many of which are unconscious, and then examining them but without judgment. Ask your yogis, can they be aware of how they speak to themselves in asanas that they find less challenging, asanas that they find more challenging? And does that reflect how they speak to themselves in life? <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> so to summarise, introducing philosophy into your classes can be an extra, amazing layer but if it ever doesn't feel quite right, you can always trust that the asana, the introspection, the breathing itself will do the work. You can guide somebody out of their head, into their body, into their breath, and leave the rest to just happen. Soon we'll have a full episode dedicated to practical tips for weaving philosophy into your classes, so stay tuned for that. As ever, we hope that this has been useful to you. We'd love to know how you're finding these episodes and if they've been helpful. Please do let us know by emailing hello at yogahero.co.uk or sending it a direct message to yogahero teachers on Instagram. 
And as always, happy, happy teaching.